All right then, gang. So welcome to this tutorial, this Flexbox tutorial, as taught by ChatGPT, which is a bit of a craze at the minute, right? So I thought I'd jump on that. And I wanted to do something a little bit different with it. So I've had it teach this tutorial. Now, for those of you that don't know what ChatGPT is, I'm sure you do. But for those that don't, it's basically an AI chatbot and you can ask it questions and it will generate human-like responses for you. So what I've done is ask it to basically create a script for this tutorial and also the code for this tutorial. So I've had a bit of a conversation with it. I've steered it in a certain direction and you have to kind of tweak the responses it gives sometimes. But I've basically, within about 45 minutes, created this tutorial with the help of ChatGPT. So ChatGPT has generated the entire script for this except for this little intro now that I'm saying, and also it's generated all of the code for this. So it's not gonna be perfect. I just wanted to do a little bit of an experiment and see what everyone thought of AI generated content for the web. In this case, a video tutorial. So I'm gonna hand you over to the script as generated by ChatGPT right now. At the end, please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I just wanted to quickly add as well, it will be read by me. I'm just reading all of the script as generated by the bot, okay? So, enjoy. Welcome to ChatGPT's guide to Flexbox. In this tutorial, we're gonna be diving into the world of Flexbox and learning how to use this powerful tool to create flexible and responsive layouts. In the first part of the tutorial, we'll be covering the basics of Flexbox and looking at some code examples to help you get started. Then in the second part, we'll be using what we've learned to create a basic page layout with a header, main content, and a sidebar. So grab your code editor, sit back, and get ready to flex those layout skills. So Flexbox, my friends, is the bee's knees of layout. It's like a superhero for your HTML and CSS, giving you the power to create flexible and responsive layouts with ease. Think of it as a container for your HTML elements, where you can control the direction, alignment, and spacing of those elements like a boss. With Flexbox, you can say goodbye to using floats and table-based layouts and hello to clean, modern, and easy to maintain code. We're gonna be flexing our HTML and CSS muscles, so put on your superhero cap and let's get started. First, we'll start by creating a basic flex container. To do this, we add the display property with a value of flex to the parent element. In this example, let's say the parent element is a div with a class of container. Here we've added three child elements with a class of item inside our container. This is just to give you an idea of how the flex properties would affect the child elements. In the CSS, we've added the display flex property to the parent element, which tells the browser to lay out all its children elements in a flex layout. We're also giving the container items a width of 300 pixels, a height of 100 pixels, and a black solid one pixel border. Next, we'll look at the flex direction property. This property controls the direction of the flex items within the container. The default value is row, which means the items will be laid out in a row from left to right, but we can also use the column value to make the items stack vertically. If you preview this in a browser, you'll see that the child elements are now stacked vertically. Now let's change the value of flex direction back to row. And if you preview this in a browser, you'll see that the child elements are now stacked horizontally. Now let's talk about alignment. The justified content property controls the alignment of the items along the main axis, which is the row axis by default. You can use values like flex start, center, flex end, space between and space around to align items. If you preview this in the browser, you'll see that the child elements are now centered along the main axis. Another important alignment property is align items, which controls the alignment of the items along the cross axis. By default, it's set to stretch, which means the items will stretch to fill the container, but you can also use values like flex start, center, and flex end. If you preview this in the browser, you'll see that the child elements are now centered along the cross axis. And lastly, to wrap up the basics, let's talk about the flex wrap property. This property controls whether the items will wrap to the next line when they run out of space. By default, it's set to no wrap, but you can also use wrap or wrap reverse. Now, if you preview this in the browser, you'll see that the child elements are now wrapping to the next line when they run out of space. And you can change the values of the properties to see the different effects in the browser. And that's it for the basics of Flexbox, folks. Don't worry if it all seems a bit overwhelming. Take your time and play around with the code examples. Also, don't hesitate to look at the resources provided by the Net Ninja, Sean. He has a lot of great tutorials and examples on his website. Now, I just want to interject right here. This is me, Sean. 
And I want to say that that was ChatGPT's words, not mine, I promise you. All right, so back to ChatGPT script. All right, folks, now that we've flexed our layout muscles and learned the basics of Flexbox, it's time to put that knowledge to the test. We're going to use Flexbox to create a snazzy page layout. So grab your code editor, your favorite beverage, and let's make something beautiful together. First, we'll start by creating a container for our navbar. This will be a header element with a class of navbar. Inside the header, we'll have a nav element that will contain all our links. Next, we're going to add the title of the site, Dojo Blog, as an H1 element and place it within the navbar at the start. If we preview this in a browser, we can see all those links and the H1. Now we'll apply Flexbox to our navbar container by adding the following CSS. The justify content space between property will make sure that our title and links are evenly distributed across the navbar, while the align item center property will center the title vertically in the navbar. And if we preview this in a browser, we can see the links and the H1 with a lot of space between each one. Lastly, we can position the links to the right of the navbar and the H1 on the left by giving the H1 a margin right of auto. To add space between the links, you can also add a margin left value of 10 pixels to each anchor tag in the nav. And if we preview in the browser again, we can see the H1 is now on the left and the links are all on the right. With this HTML and CSS, we've created a basic navbar with Flexbox that contains the title Dojo Blog and four links aligned to the right of the navbar. After completing the steps for creating the navbar, you can add some additional styles to make it look a bit nicer. For example, you can add a background color to the navbar using the background color property, as well as some padding. You can also change the font family and color for the title and links using the font family and color properties. Please note that I've used common web fonts like Poppins and Open Sans. You might need to include them in your project if you want to use them. Keep in mind that this is just a basic example. You can always add more styles or customize it to your liking. Also, don't forget to preview those changes in the browser to see the effect of the different properties. All right, folks, now that we've got a snazzy navbar, it's time to move on to the main event, the main content. We're gonna create a two column layout with the main content area on the left and a sidebar on the right, where the main content area will be the blog post and the sidebar will contain other category links, all using Flexbox. Let's dive in and make it happen. First, we'll start by creating a container for our main content and sidebar. This will be a div element with a class of main content. Inside the div, we have two more divs, one for the main content and one for the sidebar. Next, we'll add some content to the main content area. This could be a blog post title, some text and an image. And we'll also add some links for other categories to the sidebar. If we preview this in a browser so far, we can see all the content on the page. Now we'll apply Flexbox to our main content container by adding the following CSS. This will make sure that the main content area and the sidebar are laid out next to each other. Next, we'll set the width of the main content area and the sidebar to 50% each, so they'll take up equal space on the page. We can preview this in a browser now to see the two columns of content. Now we can add some additional styles to the main content area, for example, a background color, font family or font weight or padding using the following CSS. And we can add some additional styles to the sidebar, for example, a background color, a font family, some font weight, and padding using the following CSS. With this HTML and CSS, we've created a two column layout for the main content of a blog post with a sidebar containing the other category links. Well, folks, that's a wrap. You've just learned the basics of Flexbox and how to use it to create a snazzy page layout. I hope you had as much fun as I did and as Sean, the Net Ninja, did too. We like the dynamic duo of web development, Batman and Robin, Bonnie and Clyde, but without the whole criminal thing. We're more like the dynamic duo of making your websites look amazing and user-friendly. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, give this video a like and share it with your friends and family. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you can also buy us a virtual coffee or two. <laughs> Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial. All right, so it's me again, Sean, and that is the end of ChatGPT script. So I just wondered what everyone thought of that tutorial as taught by ChatGPT. I thought it was okay. It was kind of standard, but there was a lot of things that I would have done differently if I was creating the tutorial myself, obviously. And to be honest, when I was generating this tutorial with the aid of ChatGPT, I had to really nudge in a direction I wanted it to go to because otherwise it would just pump out something that wasn't quite right or didn't kind of feel right for the tutorial. 
So I think that's where a lot of the skill is going to lie in the future when people are working with AI to create content for the web or content for something else. It's going to be in how you can best guide AI in the direction that you want it to go to because otherwise it's all going to be very generic and it's going to feel like the human has been stripped out of the content which isn't good so that's my thoughts anyway it would be good to know what everyone else thinks down in the comments and maybe in the future I'll do another one I'll work with it a little bit more see if I can guide it in a slightly better direction to make something that felt a little more human but yeah let me know what you think down in the comments.